Coming up on HDMI Test Bench, we use a variety of tools, including Meridio's 8K Fox & Hound Test Kit. To check out this, this is Bridgie's brand new Mark Series 8K HDMI 2.1 fiber optic cable. Stick around. How's it going, home theater fans? My name is Todd Anderson, editor at the home theater forum, avnirvana.com, and today we have two different lengths of Bridgie's brand new flagship AOC cable back in the workshop and on the bench. If you shop for HDMI fiber on Amazon, you might recognize the Bridgie name. They do have a number of consumer grade cables for sale. The subject of this review, the Mark series, it is not slated for Amazon sales. And in fact, it's so new that it doesn't have a retail channel here in North America quite yet. However, I'm told it will soon be available through custom install channels and pricing should look something like this. I'll update where the cable can be purchased in the description below once that information becomes available. Bridgie is calling the Mark series the world's first customized high-grade precision 8K fiber optic cable. And is that a mouthful? And if you watched our last edition of HDMI Test Bench, then you know that there are definitely other high-quality 8K HDMI uh, 2.1 AOC cables out there on the market. So for purposes of this review, we're just going to operate under the premise that this is intended to be another high-end installment. Calling it a first might be a bit of a stretch. I'd also encourage you to ignore claims that any cable will deliver a better audio or visual experience. What you should be most concerned with when we're looking at HDMI cables is build quality, physical attributes, and overall functionality. That goes without saying. We also need to be very concerned with whether or not the cable can reliably pass all those ones and zeros to the spec that it claims to meet. Now, first and foremost, it's probably really worth mentioning that this particular series of cables has achieved ISF's stamp of approval, which is a really big deal and a good sign that it does exactly what it's intended to do. It also carries HDMI certification, which you can see right there. It checks out with the free HDMI certification app. And for those of you shopping around, make sure any ultra high speed cable that you purchase has this label and can actually scan to the correct cable. Bridgie has designed this cable to meet the current HDMI 2.1a specification, which means it can pass 48 gigabits per second, 8K 60 hertz video, eARC, of course, also ARC. And it also means that this cable is backwards compatible, which means that you can buy it now and use it with some legacy HDMI devices without any problems. All right, so let's dive into what Bridgie claims makes the Mark series a flagship worthy product. And a lot of that centers around what Bridgie calls the OE Optiz design, which is only found on this cable. OE stands for Opto Engine and Optives is short for optimized. So you can probably see where they're going with this. It refers to optimized components within the cable's optical engine. Bridgie says the engine uses custom chips and connectors manufactured in Japan and you know, it's worth noting that these are expensive for them to source, along with silver-plated oxygen-free copper for long-run transmission and a blend of four OM3 fiber strands used for the data channels. They take these bits and pieces and assemble them using an expensive magnification device called a Keyens to ensure that optical fibers and their corresponding laser lenses are perfectly aligned. So what we're ultimately left with are cables that are manufactured to exceedingly high standards. At least that's what Bridgie is hanging its hat on. I actually had an opportunity to meet several members of the Bridgie team at a recent trade show here in the United States, and they are certainly proud of the manufacturing process that these cables go through. Now let's check out what the packaging looks like. And you can see here it's high quality, complete with a black satin bag. To be honest, since this cable isn't slated for the consumer circuit per se, I'm a bit surprised that so much thought and design was dedicated to the packaging, but it appears this is what they'll be rolling with for full production. The shorter two meter cable sent to me is actually a pre-production sample, but the 15 meter version was manufactured more recently 
and came with white gloves for uh, handling the cable and extra large tags that designate cable directionality. Build-wise, the cable appears to be well-made and has a few noteworthy features that are worth pointing out. First off, you can see the plug, which is made from copper, not iron, and that is plated with 30 microns of 24 karat gold, which Bridgie says enhances overall conductivity. There's a silver metallic head casing, a bit of rubber protecting the cable where it enters the head and the cabling itself, which has an external nylon braid. Now this scratchy sounding external braid has some pros and cons. On the plus side, it will definitely protect the cable from nicks and scrapes and things of that sort. It also has some nice physical memory. Right there you can see that, which should help reduce strain to ports on the components that you'll be plugging the cable into. On the downside, as this cable is twisted like this, it's almost impossible to lay it flat. Now, imagine that if you were pulling this through a conduit blind and some twists were occurring in the cable, it's going to take up a bit of that conduit, if not create some issues with other cables in terms of pulling them. So something to be aware of if you're going to be pulling this blind, you're going to need to do it very carefully. On the flip side, I think this cable is going to be exceedingly easy for someone to lay on the ground, hide under baseboards, an even shape to fit around corners. Like all cables on HDMI test bench, I measured quite a few physical attributes. Of note, the cable's head is about 10 millimeters shorter than the last AOC cable we tested and 25 millimeters shorter when considering the length of the head and its rubber reinforcement where the cable connects to the head. And with a termination bend of 2.6 inches, it doesn't require a lot of space between a component's backside and a flat surface. Also, a static bend radius of 20 millimeters is quite good, nearly half of what you would see from a traditional all copper HDMI cable. Again, these are all super positive space saving and manageability aspects. In terms of overall length, both cables measured exactly as advertised. And in terms of performance, I analyzed both cables using Meridio's 8K Fox and Hound test kit along with real world tests consisting of five different sources. Both cables performed exactly the same, so I'll only show you video from the 15 meter test. First up is the Fox and Hounds cable test mode where I asked it to confirm a five volt connection and 40 gigabits of bandwidth, and you can see right there, it passes. Next, we challenged the cable with an 8K 60 hertz 10 bit color and 4K 60 hertz 12 bit color signal both with HDR10 and HDCP 2.X engaged along with all eight channels of audio. And you can see the cables had no problem handling those tasks. Next, I challenged the cables with some real world testing that included 4K versions of Apple TV and Roku Ultra along with a Kaleidoscape 4K Strato C player and Panasonic's 4K UB820 player lag in terms of what I could see with my eye was completely non-existent when the cable was used with a Nintendo Switch. Here you can see the connection with the Panasonic playing a 4K version of the film Gemini Man, which is a 4K 60 Hertz film. And there are zero issues pushing that signal through to a JVC NZ8 projector. In addition, it's worth noting the cable passed hot plugging scenarios with all five sources, so no worries on that front. All right, so now for the big verdict, the Bridgie Mark series gets our bench stamp of approval. This will make a great addition to any 4K or 8K system, and don't forget about legacy systems. If you're running an older standard HD uh, legacy media system, this will also integrate well into that, and of course, you can reliably pass data through this really long 15 meter cable. All right, folks, that's all I have for you today. Coming up next on HDMI Test Bench, we have the entire lineup of AudioQuest HDMI cables. Those are all tested. We just need to record the show. So we'll see you next time on HDMI Test Bench.